Every fall, Foreman Williams asks his engineering students at the University of California at San Diego, what brought down the World Trade Center? The first answer always is, well, of course, the airplanes. The airplanes brought down the Twin Towers. So I tell them, well, but after the airplanes hit the towers, uh, the towers were still standing. And so what brought down the Twin Towers? Usually the next answer is, well, the airplanes had lots of jet fuel and the burning of the jet fuel brought them down. Jet fuel burnt out in the first 10 or 15 minutes and the towers were still standing uh, at that time. But the jet fuel acted like a match, Williams said, starting an even more devastating, longer lasting blaze in the contents of the building, the furniture, office paper, etc. That's what would burn for an hour or two. While many have viewed the World Trade Center incident as an unsurvivable disaster, engineers say this is simply not the case. The Twin Towers could have survived both the airplane crashes and fires, they say. The official government report on the World Trade Center collapse by the National Institute of Standards and Technologies agrees, saying that the World Trade Center towers likely would not have collapsed under the combined effects of aircraft impact damage and the extensive multi-floor fires that were encountered on September 11th. So why did the buildings come down? According to Williams, who's one of the world's leading experts on heat transfer and served on the National Construction Safety Team that advised NIST during the preparation of the World Trade Center report, the Twin Towers collapsed because of inadequate fireproofing. The spray-on foam insulation used on the buildings was simply not thick enough, he says. If, if the fire protection material had been thick enough, then uh, personally I feel certain that the towers would still be standing today. James Quintieri, a professor of fire protection at the University of Maryland, agrees. I'm glad he said that, and I'm glad he told you that. And he's, he's one of the greatest combustion scientists that has lived in modern times. One could claim the building wasn't designed right. My scenario would say the airplane started the fire, but the building came down because there wasn't enough insulation on the trusses. When a steel building is built, spray applied foam material, SFRM, is put on the building. And the purpose of that is for fire protection. If there is a fire in, in, in the building, this fire protection material slows down the rate of heat transfer from the fire to the steel. And so that gives more time uh, for the uh, uh, fire to burn and hopefully uh, long enough for the fire to burn out. Although steel does not melt until temperatures above 2,000 degrees Celsius, it loses strength around 600 degrees Celsius. At that temperature, they're no longer capable of, of sustaining the weight of the building. Well, common today, the World Trade Center was one of the first major skyscrapers to use SFRM, according to NIST. NIST notes the New York building codes, the manufacturer of the floor trusses, the architect of record, and the structural engineer of record all stated it was important to test the fireproofing for the building floor system, but NIST says the Port Authority confirmed that there was no record fire endurance testing had ever been done. It was the only structural component of the building that was not tested, NIST said. In reviewing the records, it could not determine how the thickness of the fireproofing was arrived at. The Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, the owner of the World Trade Center, did not respond to repeated requests for comment and declined to answer two Freedom of Information Act requests concerning the fireproofing for the original and new World Trade Centers. At the time of its completion, the World Trade Center was the tallest building in the world. How could a building of this magnitude and this, you know, stature in the world get such a short study in fire protection? I mean, they went very, very deep in designing for wind. Why not go deep in designing for fire? Why not do a test of the structure? NIST disagrees with Williams and Quintieri, according to spokesperson Michael Newman. NIST maintains the airplanes removed most or a significant portion of the foam insulation when the planes hit the buildings. We believe that had the existing fireproofing on the steel of the towers remained intact, the buildings would have remained standing because the heat from the fires would not have weakened the steel enough to cause them to lose integrity. NIST claims it performed tests that confirm this. But Williams said he reviewed all of NIST data while serving on the advisory committee, and their conclusion is simply not supported by the data. He says any expert who knows anything about heat transfer would not agree with NIST. He says NIST should look at their own reports to see what shape the SFRM coatings were in. Certainly not all of the fire protection material was moved by, removed by the impact of the airplanes. If it, all, if it had been removed, the, the towers would have down, come down much more quickly than they actually did. <laughs> so clearly there was some protection there. <laughs> Williams notes that the North Tower, which was hit first, lasted longer than the South Tower, which was hit second. 
The fireproofing in the North Tower had been upgraded to one and a half inches on the upper floors, whereas the fireproofing in the South Tower was three quarters of an inch. I think that that has a lot to do with the fact that the, that the, that this second tower came down uh, first. But if you have three quarters of an, of an inch of insulation, the steel is going to get to temperatures where it's going to act like soft spaghetti in about 50 minutes. And if you have an inch and a half, double, it's going to take about 100 minutes. Well, the South Tower fell in 54 and the North in 102. I, I, you know, that's, that's almost like a smoking gun. And if I'm doing an investigation and I get results like that, I want to home in on that. NIST claims the reasons the second tower fell first had to do with the angle at which the planes crashed in each building. NIST says it performed tests using pellets which backed up its claims. But Williams dismisses those tests, saying he found them too simplistic to represent the real situation in the building. There's, there's no way to determine how much material was dislodged. I mean, the buildings collapsed, okay? <laughs> uh, the material could all have been there, but after the buildings have collapsed, of course, the material's going to be gone. <laughs> I think that if, if you can almost know the opposite, I think, that, that uh, if all of the materials throughout the mater buildings had, had, had been removed by the impact and the vibration that followed, uh, the, the building would be full of, uh, uh, <laughs> it'd be hard to breathe. <laughs> so I really don't think that all the material was removed. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't. Quintieri said for him, the fact that the Port Authority began upgrading the thickness of the fireproofing in the North Tower is a red flag and shows they know something was wrong. Why would they get it wrong in the first place? I, you, you know, the, the heating up of steel by a fire is basically heat conduction through the insulation to the steel. That, that is not rocket science. That's a relatively simple calculation. Williams and Quintieri both say NIST underestimated the amount of fuel in the building, meaning the amount of burnable contents in the building. The amount of combustible material may have been twice to what NIST calculated. Quintieri said because NIST underestimated the strength of the fire in the building contents, he felt NIST had to assume the fireproofing came off. Otherwise, even their own calculations show the buildings wouldn't have come down. This is very important because the amount of fuel determines how long the fire lasts. And how long the fire lasts controls how hot the steel gets. Quintieri said NIST missed 170 file cabinets full of paper in the Marsh and McLennan floors, let alone throughout the rest of the building. When I told NIST this, they said uh, paper and file cabinets doesn't burn. So I did my own test. I was on sabbatical at the uh, FAA Technical Center outside of Atlantic City, and just about all of the paper burned to char. I mean, there was no virgin paper left. So I think they got it wrong. I think they got it wrong by the statistics, and I think they got it wrong because they didn't pursue deep enough, and I think they got it wrong because in the drawings they missed the file cabinets. How thick should the fireproofing have been? Quintieri said he performed his own calculations and tests. I'm uh, extrapolating from data in the test literature. Uh, as two inches. Two inches, two and a half, you know, should be some kind of safety factor. I think that would have been good for the trusses. And, uh, you know, we even did tests back in the uh, uh, CAFCO, which is now called Isolatech Laboratory. William said he did not do his own tests, but off the top of his head, if well applied, <laughs> strong adhesive, uh, uh, three inch thick uh, SFRM had been on both towers, then both of them surely would be standing today. Quintieri said that after the World Trade Center collapsed, he and others asked NIST to save the steel from the building. The steel had been stamped with its location in the towers so that even after the collapse, a forensic analysis of the material would have allowed engineers to determine how hot temperatures got throughout the building. That could have helped NIST verify either his or their conclusion about the adequacy of the fireproofing one way or the other. But only a small portion of the steel was ever kept, not enough to be conclusive. It seems strange to me. I mean, you have really competent people in New York, uh, a lot of lawyers, and lawyers know if you're dealing with a fire scene, you don't want to spoil it, you want to save the evidence. And in this case, the building fell down and it was being held up by steel. So if the steel is marked, why throw away the steel? It's, it's either ignorance or rush to clean up or we don't want to go there. 
I don't, I don't know the answer. One thing Nist and Williams and Quintieri do all agree on is that the fireproofing played a critical role in the collapse of the World Trade Center. Greg Mantell, Los Angeles.